Do you need a simple way to add your voice to your video? Your answer is here. Hey everyone, I'm Tim, and today we're going to dive into how to not just add a voiceover to your video, but also give it that little extra polish. And we're going to do all of this in DaVinci Resolve. Let's get started. To download DaVinci Resolve, you can either find the link at the description or go to Google search DaVinci Resolve and click on the Blackmagic design specific link and then scroll down on the page and you will see DaVinci Resolve free download now. Go ahead and click that link. It'll bring up this pop-up with DaVinci Resolve, the current version, and then DaVinci Resolve Studio. We're gonna download the regular DaVinci Resolve for your respective operating system. So I'll go ahead and click on this. You can just fill out all of your information. Once you do, you can hit register and download and it'll automatically start to download and you can run the installation from there. Now DaVinci Resolve Studio is the paid version that adds quite a few features, but the free version has everything that we need for today. And the reason we're using Resolve is that it can do simple things very effectively. It adds nice polish with its built-in audio tools, and it gives you the ability to learn really powerful software when you're ready to use it for bigger things. Now, when you open DaVinci Resolve, you'll be presented with this project manager, and this is where all of your projects are stored. We're just going to go ahead and create a new project by double-clicking the Untitled Project, and I'll just call this VO Project, and hit Create. And then that will normally bring us to the cut page. We're actually going to move over to the edit page to do this voiceover. And to bring in our video that we're going to add voiceover to, we can just simply drag it from our file explorer or finder on a Mac into this media pool over here. And if it asks us to change the project frame rate, that just basically means that it's going to change it to whatever the clip is that we imported. And I'm gonna go ahead and exit that out and we have our clip inside of our media pool. And so what we can do is we can just click and drag this onto the timeline and that's automatically going to create a timeline for us. And now that we have this in here, I can zoom in on this by holding Alt and scrolling in on the wheel. And we can go ahead and just add our voiceover right to this by going up to timeline and record voiceover. And in this tab, we can do multiple things like name our file. So we can just call this voiceover. We can select which mic that we want to use if we have multiple mics. And we can set the track that we want this audio to go to. Now, since there is a little bit of audio, we might want to keep some of this ambience. I don't want to record on that first audio track, so I'm going to select auto, and that's going to automatically create a track if it detects something else on this track here. And then there's this three dot menu that we can look at to see what other options we have. And the two that I'm going to point out right here are the enable three seconds countdown, which basically means that as soon as you hit this record button, it'll give a three second timer so that you can get situated and ready to record and you don't miss a beat. And then there's the mute timeline audio while recording, which is nice to have. And I'm actually going to enable it for this right now. And that'll mean that if there's any other audio in this timeline or in this video, it will not play it while you're recording the voiceover. So let's go ahead and record this voiceover right now. And I'll just select record. And it will give us the timer here. And then we record. As we walk this path up the hill, we quickly realize that this is a mountain. As we walk this path up the hill, we quickly realize that this is a mountain. And so we did multiple variations of it. And the way we can actually work with this, I'm going to go ahead and close this voiceover window out now, hold alt and scroll in. So we have our voiceover track and I did two versions. And I think I like the second version better. So if I want to trim and only keep this second version in place of where I want, I can just hover my mouse over the beginning of this clip to where I see this icon here. And I can just click and drag to where this voiceover starts. And I can do the same thing with the ending as well. Let's listen to where I end it. This is a mountain. So we can go ahead and just trim that ending off just in case. And then we can do things like hover over this white line here and this will allow us to increase or decrease our volume in case it was a little quiet when we recorded. As we walk this path up the hill, we quick and that gives us a lot better sounding audio there. And then there's a couple other ways that we can modify this audio to make it sound a little bit more clean. If we click on our mixer tab up here, it'll pull up this mixer box down here on the right. And what this will allow us to do is add things like special effects, dynamics, or EQ. 
And we're going to just go over these really simply, but these will allow us to have a little bit more finesse in our audio so it doesn't sound as jumpy and it gives us a little bit more smoothness and crispness to our sound. Now, if we open up our dynamics, the tool that we're really going to focus on here is the compressor. Now we're gonna break this compression down very, very simply so it's easy to understand that the two main controls inside of a compressor is the threshold and the ratio. And the threshold sets the point where the compressor will start to kick in and start to bring down the highest volume, and the ratio decides how much to reduce the sound that's above the threshold. For vocals, I usually like to keep it between 2.5 and 3 and that's a pretty good ratio to keep it still sounding somewhat natural and so let's go ahead and play this back and see if it sounds any better as we walk this path up the hill we quickly realize that this is a mountain all right so that sounds like it's kicking in quite nicely and then we can just bring up our makeup gain and this will bring up the lowest parts so basically what we're doing is we're bringing down the highest parts and bringing up the lowest parts and that's really the point of a compressor so let's go ahead and play this back as we walk this path up the hill we quickly realize that this is a mountain and that's the compressor in a nutshell it's not too bad now we can move on to the eq and the EQ is the way to shape your voice by adjusting frequencies. The lower frequencies add depth, mid areas add more presence, and the highs add clarity. So the first thing we usually want to do when we do EQ is cut anything that doesn't sound good. So you always want to reduce frequencies first before you start adding them. So let's go ahead and start by bringing down some frequencies we might not like. As we walk this path up the hill, we quickly realize that this is... A mountain and that sounds somewhat decent I'm not gonna go crazy with this right now but let's go ahead and bring down maybe this area right over here as we walk this path up the hill we quickly realize that this is a mountain and that sounds halfway decent I might not even need to do anything else I'll probably just bring up the low end as we path. walk this path up the hill we quickly realize that and that might be okay for now. There's probably a little bit more I could do with this, but I'm just going to keep it as is for now, not go super crazy. And now we have some refined audio here. As we walk this path up the hill, we quickly realize that this is a mountain. All right, and then if we want to cut our video here so we only keep this part, there are a few keyboard shortcuts, but for simplicity's sake, we can make sure we just turn our snapping on, which we can also press S for. And that'll allow us to highlight the video clip and then drag it back and it'll snap to where that audio ends. And we can do the same thing with the beginning over here and we can make sure this linked selection is turned on and that will also allow us to, whenever we select video, audio is selected as well. So we're gonna go ahead and just drag this back and make sure that's snapped to here. And now we only have that part inside of the video. And then if we wanted to export this, we can go ahead and go to the deliver page. And this is how we actually get this video out of our software. And so we have a number of presets, which are really nice to have. If this is going up to YouTube, you can use YouTube presets if you want. I usually like to do H.265 masters or even do my own custom export. And then we can go ahead and hit browse to set our location where we want to end up. So we can go inside of our project here and I'm just gonna go ahead and make a new folder and just call it exports just to keep it a little bit more organized. But I'll just go ahead and throw it in there and we can just say voiceover video. And now our video is almost ready to render. Now, if we scroll in on the timeline real quick, let's just go ahead and alt scroll here. We notice we have this blank space that we might not want. So an easy way to fix that is just by going to the beginning of this clip and then pressing I, and that'll set our in and out range to be able to render this out. So now we can select add to render queue, and that's going to add the render queue job up here. And you can add multiple if you wanted to, if you had different variants of this, but we're only doing one today. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this second one and I'm gonna go ahead and highlight it and then select render all. And that'll render our video out with the voiceover that we just created. Now you have the tools to not only record your voiceover, but also give it that little bit of extra professional touch. And if you practice your voiceover skills enough, you may even start to sound like Kevin.